Hello, I'm Grandin Gill, and this is the first in a series of six short videos whose focus is looking at uh, different structures for common types of paper. And in this particular video, we're going to cover the empirical research paper, which is probably the most common type of paper we see in business and information systems research. And the background on this is provided in part two of this series, where I look at the different pieces of a paper. So uh, these videos will be substantially shorter. Just as a quick review, in part two, I introduced what I refer to as the LIFO structure for creating a paper. And I was given uh, an introduction to this structure from my colleague uh, G.J. DeVretta, who uh, deserves all the credit for it. But what it basically notices is that the typical paper structure uh, consists of parts that sort of wind up the paper and then unwind the paper. And we tend to unwind in the reverse order of the uh, winding. So it's basically like a last in, first out stack. In practical terms, this means that if you start with an introduction, you're going to raise issues uh, that position the paper and are resolved and uh, discussed in the conclusion. Uh, your background section, which differs according to the type of paper is going to get resolved in your destruct discussion section and this is where you talk about the contribution. Uh, where a method section is appropriate, uh, the method section is resolved when you present your results and we call this how you execute the research. And in almost all the paper structures that I will be discussing, and there are six in the series, uh, we will use this basic approach. Now this approach um, is very formulaic. If you've written lots of research papers, uh, you can come up with your own approach to presenting the papers, but this series is really designed for people who have not written a lot of research papers and are looking for a reasonably mechanical way of uh, getting started. So the empirical research uh, structure is exactly the structure that was talked to in part two. So I'm just going to go over this briefly. If you want more details on the various sections, uh, look at the part two video, which talks about the generic paper structure. At any rate, the empirical research paper will normally begin with an introduction that tees up the problem. It provides kind of the motivation for why the reader should read. And if the reader goes to the conclusion section, issues that have been raised in the introduction should be addressed in the conclusion section. Both of these sections would often be relatively short because these are the sections that are designed to bring the reader in. Now, after the introduction, you're going to have a series uh, of what we will call background sections. Uh, and these will typically be top level headings, even though we show them as indented here. Um, the first section is likely to present the problem context. Uh, what is important about the problem? Why might it m matter to managers? And uh, here we're more focused on why the problem matters than on what research has been written about the problem. Uh, when you get to the discussion section where this is unwrapped, you might talk about implications for stakeholders. Uh, after you've set up the problem context, uh, uh, which is a little more focused than the introduction, then you're going to go to the literature review. And depending upon the size of the literature review, you may begin with a protocol that identifies uh, why you chose the specific articles that you're going to talk about. Uh, then there will be a literature summary. And um, if you go to uh, part two, the second paper 
uh, within this series. Um, uh, we have a literature review paper structure that talks a little bit more about a review. But very often, uh, you'll want to use tables to review the literature uh, because that helps the reader who is trying to pick out specific things uh, from the paper. Uh, but a narrative organization is often possible. One of the things about literature review is there are some very common issues. The first is uh, reviewing literature that isn't really all that relevant uh, simply because you read it in the course of your literature search. You want to try to avoid that. The other thing is talking about what the research did as opposed to what the research found. So uh, if you have something in your literature or review, you know, Smith and Jones uh, conducted a detailed survey of uh, entry-level accounting professionals and, and uh, used an in-depth uh, survey methodology, that doesn't really help the reader very much. You need to continue that and say what they found was the following. That does help the reader. Uh, the reader doesn't necessarily want to follow your train of thought and go through all the different things that people have looked at. The fact that people have looked at something is not really interesting in a literature review for an empirical piece. Instead, what you're interested in is what they found and what that tells you about what to expect from your research. Uh, after you've done the literature review, you will normally set up some sort of research model. Here you might present more focused research questions. You might uh, clarify research objectives or specify research objectives, which might be quite general in the introduction. Uh, but in the research model, you really want to focus on what you're planning to research. And uh, for empirical research that involves testing, uh, you may have a subsequent section that deals specifically with the hypotheses that you're going to test. Now, uh, as I mentioned, in the LIFO model, we tend to unwind things in the reverse order where they were created. So uh, when you, uh, your literature review comes second, so your implications for theory might come uh, at this position within the uh, method section. Uh, your research model um, is presented after your literature review. So uh, when you talk about the results, of your uh, research, you would deal with the implications for your research model. Your hypotheses uh, come at the end of the uh, background sections, and so you might deal with them first in your discussion. Uh, the point of the discussion section is to alert the readers about what is important about what you found. Uh, now, once you've teed up the problem in your background section and uh, you're ready to actually look at the research method that is going to uh, be addressed, used to address the question in the research. And the research method gets unwound in the results. And the structure for these is really going to depend a lot on the specific method you use. And uh, this series of lectures is not a substitute for a research methods course. Rather, it's uh, focused on how you would present what you're doing in a paper. But different methods will have different subsections. Uh, and what you want to do in your results is present the results of your research uh, with little or no interpretation. So if you've got hypotheses, you can say this hypothesis was supported in your results section, but you don't say what that means. You save that for the discussion section. So your results are going to essentially present what you found in conducting the research and should closely match uh, what you said you were going to look for in the methods section. Well, thank you for listening and feel free to look at the other five videos in this series. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is grandon, that's G-R-A-N-D-O-N, at usf.edu. Once again, grandon at usf.edu.
Thank you very much for watching.